Sir Malcolm Leslie Rifkind, KCMG, QC, MP is a British Conservative Party politician and Member of Parliament for Kensington. He served in various roles as a cabinet minister under Prime Ministers Margaret Thatcher and John Major, including Secretary of State for Scotland, Defence Secretary and Foreign Secretary. Rifkind was the Member of Parliament for Edinburgh Pentlands from 1974 to 1997, when his party lost power and he lost his seat to the Labour Party. He attempted, unsuccessfully, to be re-elected in Pentlands in 2001. The constituency was abolished before the 2005 general election and he was adopted, and subsequently elected, as the Conservative candidate for Kensington and Chelsea. He announced his intention to seek the leadership of the party before the 2005 Conservative Party leadership election, but withdrew before balloting commenced. He became chairman of the Standards and Privileges Committee of the House of Commons during the 2005 Euro 2010 Parliament. Rifkin stood for the Kensington seat and was elected at the 2010 general election with a majority of 8,616 votes. He was appointed chairman of the Intelligence and Security Committee by the Prime Minister, David Cameron, on July 6, 2010, a post he will hold for the duration of the Parliament. Rifkind is a patron of the Tory Reform Group, and is an advocate for British military intervention in the Syrian civil war, with or without a mandate from the United Nations. In 2014 he was appointed chairman of the World Economic Forum's Nuclear Security Council. Early life Rifkind was born in Edinburgh to a Jewish family that emigrated to Britain in the 1890s from Lithuania. Among his cousins are Leon and Samuel Britton. He was educated at George Watson's College and the University of Edinburgh where he studied law before taking a postgraduate degree in political science. While at university he took part in an overland expedition to the Middle East and India. He also appeared on University Challenge. He worked as an assistant lecturer at the University College of Rhodesia in Salisbury from 1967 to Euro 68. He was called to the Scottish Bar in 1970 and practised full-time as an advocate until 1974. He was appointed a Queen's Council in 1985 and a member of the Privy Council in 1986. From 1970 to 1974 he was a member of Edinburgh Town Council. Member of Parliament Rifkin first stood for Parliament, unsuccessfully, in 1970 in the Edinburgh Central constituency. He entered Parliament in the February 1974 general election representing Edinburgh Pentlands for the Scottish Conservative and Unionist Party. During the leadership election in 1975 he supported Edward Heath in the first round but when Heath withdrew Rifkin voted for Margaret Thatcher. Thatcher, on becoming leader, appointed Rifkin an opposition front-bench spokesman on Scottish affairs. He subsequently resigned from the position in protest at the decision of the Shadow Cabinet to vote against the government's bill for a Scottish Assembly. Rifkin argued that as, at that time, the Conservative Party supported the principle of a Scottish Assembly it would have been preferable either to vote for the second reading of the bill or to abstain, and try to improve the bill. In the subsequent referendum on a Scottish Assembly Rifkin voted in favour but withdrew his support when the result of the referendum showed Scotland almost equally divided over the proposal. Junior Minister, Rifkin was one of only four ministers to serve throughout the whole 18 years of the governments of Margaret Thatcher and John Major. This represents the longest, uninterrupted ministerial service in Britain since Lord Palmerston in the early 19th century. He was appointed Minister of Home Affairs and the Environment at the Scottish Office in the 1979 Thatcher Government. In that role he was responsible for the passage of the Tenants' Rights Act which resulted in a massive increase of home ownership in Scotland as council tenants bought their homes. He was also responsible, under the Secretary of State for relations with local government and for the police and prisons. In 1982, at the time of the Falklands War, he was transferred to the Foreign and Commonwealth Office as Parliamentary Under Secretary of State, being promoted to Minister of State at the Foreign Office in 1983. At the Foreign Office he served first under Francis Pym and then Sir Geoffrey Howe. Rifkind was responsible for Britain's relations with the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe, the European Community, and Sub-Saharan Africa. 
he assisted Sir Geoffrey Howe in persuading Mrs. Thatcher to change the government's policy on the Soviet Union, attended the Chequers meeting which decided to invite Soviet leaders to the United Kingdom, and was present at Chequers when Mrs. Thatcher had her first meeting with Mikhail Gorbachev and decided that he was a Soviet leader with whom she could do business. Rifkind also had strong links with the Solidarity Movement in Poland. In 1984 he made a ministerial visit to Poland. Against the wishes of General Jaruzelski, the Polish Communist president, he insisted on laying a wreath at the grave of the murdered Polish priest Father Jerzy Popiarsko, and had a meeting with three of the leaders of the banned Solidarity Movement. Jaruzelski attacked Rifkind and cancelled a meeting he was due to have with him but Rifkind's meeting with Solidarity created a precedent that was followed by the West German Foreign Minister, Hans-Dietrich Genscher and other Western ministers. This helped force the Polish government to remove the ban on solidarity and acknowledge the need for political reform and pluralism. Rifkind was, subsequently, decorated by the non-communist democratic Polish government for his support. Rifkind, as minister responsible for the European community, was appointed by the Prime Minister as her personal representative on the Duch Committee of the European Community. The report of the committee helped prepare the way for the development of the single European market. Secretary of State for Scotland, in 1986 he was promoted into the cabinet as Secretary of State for Scotland. He gained a reputation as being a moderate voice on social and economic issues, and sometimes had disputes with Margaret Thatcher. As Secretary of State he initiated major reforms in Scotland. These included the privatisation of the Scottish electricity industry and the Scottish Transport Group. He created Scottish Homes as the government's housing agency. And Scottish Natural Heritage which combined both the Countryside Commission for Scotland and the Nature Conservancy Council. He also transformed the Scottish Development Agency into Scottish Enterprise with much greater private sector involvement. When Rifkin became Secretary of State his first task was to defuse a teacher's dispute which was crippling Scottish education. He also sought to help the Ravenscraig steel mill which was threatened with closure. Rifkin opposed closure by the government arguing that the whole steel industry should be privatised and that the future of individual plants would be determined by the companies that owned them in the private sector. One of his most difficult challenges was the demand from the public for the abolition of the domestic rate system. Rifkin supported the introduction of the community charge, or poll tax, which the cabinet had approved shortly before his appointment. He also agreed with the decision proposed by his predecessor, George Younger, that the new tax should be introduced a year earlier in Scotland than in England because of the political necessity to end the domestic rates. Rifkin subsequently accepted that the poll tax had been a major mistake by the government. Throughout his term as Scottish Secretary, Rifkin, like Younger before him, and Ian Lang and Michael Forsyth in later years, was constrained by the political weakness of the Conservative Party in Scotland unlike in England. This problem was the underlying reason for his differences with Mrs Thatcher which increased, significantly, towards the end of her prime ministership. When Mrs Thatcher was challenged by Michael Heseltine for the leadership of the Conservative Party, Rifkin voted for her. During the tense period that followed the first round of voting Rifkind was one of those who advised Mrs Thatcher that it would be best for her to stand down and did not promise to support her if she stood for election. Mrs Thatcher considered his action treachery. In the subsequent leadership election he supported Douglas Hurd. Secretary of State for Transport, in 1990 he was moved by John Major to be Secretary of State for Transport. One of his first responsibilities was to go into the Channel Tunnel, which was being constructed, and witness the first physical contact between those tunnelling from the French and British ends of the tunnel. One of his main priorities as Transport Secretary was to take forward the policy proposals for the privatisation of the railways. Rifkin supported privatisation but concluded that it would be a mistake to separate ownership of the infrastructure from the operating companies as track costs were a large percentage of their unavoidable costs. This view brought him into conflict with the Treasury and meant that conservative proposals for privatisation were not ready by the time of the 1992 general election. The Prime Minister favoured the Treasury argument that competition between railways companies would be discouraged if one company owned the track. 
Rifkind maintained that the competition to rail would come from air and road and not from other rail companies. After Rifkind left the Ministry of Transport in 1992 the Treasury view prevailed and this led to the creation of Railtrack. Secretary of State for Defense Rifkind was appointed Secretary of State for Defense after the 1992 general election. Although he had no military background he was a firm believer in strong defense and armed forces with a global capability. One of his early decisions was to reverse the proposed disbandment of the Cheshire and Staffordshire Regiment and the Royal Scots and King's Own Scottish Borderers. In 1994 he was faced with Treasury demands for major cuts in the defense budget. In order to protect the fighting capability of the armed forces he negotiated a settlement with the Treasury whereby he would deliver savings greater than they were demanding but that he would be allowed to keep the additional savings and use them for the purchase of new military equipment for each of the three services. He had already won the support of the Chiefs of Staff for this approach which provided an incentive for their cooperation in making the necessary economies. The outcome was the Frontline First report which was well received both in Parliament and in the armed forces. However, some of its proposals, particularly in regard to defense medical services were, in later years, subjected to heavy criticism. With some of the additional savings that had been found Rifkind was able to secure the agreement of the United States to British purchase of cruise missiles. The United Kingdom was, at that time, the only country to which the Americans were willing to sell cruise missiles. Rifkind also reformed the reserve forces and initiated the policy review which led to the TA and other reservists being able to be used in operations abroad without the need for full mobilization of the whole territorial army as had been needed in the past. One of the most difficult problems that Rifkind dealt with as Defense Secretary was British involvement in the Bosnian War in former Yugoslavia. Like John Major and the Foreign Secretary, Douglas heard, Rifkind was opposed to military intervention by Britain and in the international community as combatants in that conflict. However, he supported the use of British troops and those from other countries to protect humanitarian food convoys that were protecting hundreds of thousands of civilians. Rifkind was a strong and vocal opponent of the American proposal for lift and strike, which would have ended the UN arms embargo and subjected the Bosnian Serbs to NATO bombing from the air. Rifkind agreed with the UN and European view that such bombing would be incompatible with a UN mission on the ground and would necessitate the ending of that mission. Rifkind expressed these views publicly in Washington as well as in London. Although the United States was increasingly frustrated and concerned at this impasse it did not do lasting damage to US-British relations as evidenced by the American willingness to sell cruise missiles to the United Kingdom. Foreign Secretary in the final years of the major administration Rifkind was the Secretary of State for Foreign and Commonwealth Affairs. One of his first duties was to chair the London summit on Bosnia which put much greater pressure on the Bosnian Serbs in the aftermath of the Srebrenica massacre and led, in due course, to the Dayton Accord which ended the fighting. As Foreign Secretary, on September 24, 1996 Rifkind addressed the United Nations General Assembly and called for a UN declaration barring political asylum for terrorists, arguing that they should not be able to benefit from the provisions of the 1951 UN Convention on Refugees to secure political asylum. In the same speech he emphasized Britain's commitment to the goal of global free trade by 2020 and said all governments should liberalize their economies and lift trading restrictions. In the Middle East Rifkind committed the British government, for the first time, to a Palestinian state on the West Bank and in Gaza. He, also, in a speech in the Gulf, called for a Middle Eastern equivalent of the OSCE to enable dialogue to take place, at the regional level between Israel and its Arab neighbors as well as between Iran and the Arab world. One of his main duties were the final negotiations with China over the transfer of Hong Kong. Rifkin had several meetings with the Chinese foreign minister both in Beijing and in London, as well as with the Hong Kong governor, Chris Patton, and elected Hong Kong politicians. Rifkin also, as foreign secretary, called for the creation of a North Atlantic free trade area that would have created a free trade relationship between the European Union and the United States and Canada. Election defeat and return to Parliament in the 1997 general election he lost his Pentland seat in common with all Conservatives in Scotland, and was succeeded by Labour candidate Linda Clark. 
Rifkind was one of the few MPs to try again in his old seat, rather than seeking a safer one, standing again for Edinburgh Pentlands against Clark in the 2001 general election. Although he improved his showing somewhat, he was unable to overturn a sizable 10.6% majority in an election where the Conservatives made little progress. During this time he remained politically active, as president of the Scottish Conservatives, and used his position outside Westminster to criticise the 2003 invasion of Iraq and the Blair government's support of it. At the time, the Conservative Party was staunchly in support of the invasion. After the 1997 general election, Rifkind received a knighthood in John Major Re Euro Unregistered Trademark S Resignation Honours, becoming a Knight Commander of the Order of St. Michael and St. George, in recognition of his work for foreign and commonwealth affairs. In the 2005 general election he returned to the House of Commons as Member of Parliament for the London constituency of Kensington and Chelsea with a majority of 12,418. Leadership contender and thereafter, on June 8, 2005, a month after the Conservative defeat in the 2005 general election, Rifkin stated that it was quite likely that he would stand for the leadership after Michael Howard's resignation. Rifkin subsequently confirmed this on August 14, although admitting that he had a mountain to climb, and receiving sparse support amongst Conservative MPs, with several exceptions such as Crispin Blunt. Despite this, Rifkin went through to the conference stage of the leadership process, in which each candidate was given speaking time to address the Conservative Party conference directly. In his speech, Rifkin declared that Conservatives had to be pragmatic, sensitive and moderate, and stress their unique combination of principle and patriotism. The speech won eight rounds of applause from the conference, with nearly a minute-long finale. The speech did not galvanize Rifkin's candidacy, however, which had always been regarded as a long shot. Bookmakers had him at 50-1 and a poll found that only 4% of Conservative voters supported his candidacy. Consequently, on October 11, 2005, he announced that he was withdrawing from the leadership contest and that he would be supporting Kenneth Clark's candidacy, acknowledging that there is no realistic prospect of me coming through. In endorsing Clark, Rifkin stated that he was head and shoulders above the other candidates and have both the experience and popular appeal to take on Labour. On December 7, 2005, he left the Conservative front bench as incoming leader David Cameron formed his team. Rifkin admitted that he had not wished to remain a shadow cabinet minister unless in the post of shadow foreign secretary, but this post had gone to William Hague. Rifkin declared his loyalty to the new party leader and remains one of the Conservative Party's most experienced senior figures. In December 2008, he became a leading spokesman of the Global Zero Movement, which includes over 300 eminent leaders and over 400,000 citizens from around the world working toward the elimination of all nuclear weapons by multilateral negotiation. In July 2010 he was appointed by the Secretary-General of the Commonwealth as a member of the Eminent Persons Group, chaired by a former Prime Minister of Malaysia which has been requested to report to the next Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting on recommendations for the future revitalization of the Commonwealth. He was Chairman of the Standards and Privileges Committee of the House of Commons until the dissolution of the House of Commons on April 12, 2010. When the Kensington and Chelsea constituency was realigned to create the new seats of Chelsea and Fulham and Kensington, Rifkin stood for the latter seat and was elected at the 2010 general election with a 50.1% share of total votes cast, with a majority of 8,616 votes. Rifkin was appointed chairman of the Intelligence and Security Committee by the Prime Minister, David Cameron, on July 6, 2010, a post he will hold for the duration of the Parliament. On August 28, 2013, Rifkind appeared to modify his anti-war principles by advocating British military intervention in the Syrian civil war, subject to certain important caveats. He stated that the best response to proof of the Syrian government's use of chemical weapons against its own people would be United Nations Security Council approval of proportionate and limited military action, but that securing unanimity in the council would be unlikely, given the near certainty of a Russian veto. He believed that. In such a case, if there were to be a broad international consensus for such military action, 
including among the nations of the Arab League, that the international community should not be paralyzed by a failure to act, and that the action should be used to target Syrian government military sites. He believed its purpose should be to deter the Syrian government from using such weapons again, and to indicate that wider action would be undertaken were it to do so. Writing in The Guardian, he accused the regime of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad of being willing to do anything that they think they can get away with as stay in power, but then claimed that for Britain, in the event of broad international consensus for military action against the Syrian government's use of chemical weapons, there was no choice but to take military action with or without a UN mandate. On March 18, 2014 during an interview with CBC Radio News, Rifkin spoke out against the Russian annexation of Crimea from Ukraine, stating that this risked destabilizing the entire area and European politics in general. In his opinion Ukrainian forces had demonstrated remarkable restraint against Russian humiliation, and had turned their military disadvantage into a substantial moral advantage. While declaring robust economic sanctions to be the best response to Crimean situation, and describing a number of possible options, he nevertheless referred to the Western implementation as pathetic, claiming that current measures affected a mere 23 individuals, and inferred this to be the reason why Russia seemed unfazed by sanction threats. Political funding The Kensington Conservative Constituency Association has received a £113,276.32 in donations since 2006, from a large variety of individuals and banking groups such as Omni Facilities Management PLC, MAB Partners LLP, as well as receiving thousands of pounds in remunerations. Personal life, he is married to Edith and they are the parents of Caroline Rifkind and The Times columnist Hugo Rifkind. He is also related to his former Conservative government colleague Leon Britton and is a second cousin once removed of producer and DJ Mark Ronson. Registered interests, current non-executive director of Unilever PLC, non-executive director of Adam Smith International. Salary A £35,000, member of advisory board, LEK Consulting. Salary A £25,000, titles and styles, Mr. Malcolm Rifkin MP 1974-1985, Mr. Malcolm Rifkin QC Northern Mariana Islands, 1985-1986, RT. Honorable Malcolm Rifkin PCQC Northern Mariana Islands, 1986-1997, RT Honorable Sir Malcolm Rifkin KCMG PC Quebec, 1997-2005, RT Honorable Sir Malcolm Rifkin KCMG PCQC Northern Mariana Islands, 2005 a Euro present, other positions and memberships, current, member of the Queen's Bodyguard for Scotland. The Royal Company of Archers, trustee of the Dilverton Trust, member of the top-level group of UK parliamentarians for multilateral nuclear disarmament and non-proliferation, established in October 2009. Co-chair of the Trident Commission established in 2011 to examine and report on the UK's nuclear weapon capability. Member of the Board of the Nuclear Threat Initiative, co-vice chairman of Global Panel America with Dov S. Zulkheim former Under Secretary of Defense for the United States. The Global Panel Foundation has offices and satellites in Berlin, Copenhagen, New York, Prague, Sydney and Toronto. Previous, Honorary Colonel of 162 Movement Control Regiment, Royal Logistic Corps, Territorial Army, Honorary Colonel City of Edinburgh University's Officer Training Corps, President, Edinburgh University Development Trust, References Publications, Rights and Wrongs, The European Convention on Human Rights and Its Application in the United Kingdom by Malcolm Rifkin and ISBN B0000 CPORH, Head to Head on the Euro, Kenneth Clark and Malcolm Rifkin edited by Janet Bush ISBN 0-9536360-3-8, Conservative Britain in the 21st Century by Malcolm Rifkin and ISBN 1-8. 97,969-53-8 Hume Occasional Paper No. 46, UN Peacekeeping A Euro Past Lessons and Future Prospects by Malcolm Rifk and ISBN 1-870482-43-3, 
Towards 2000 by Malcolm Rifkin and ISBN 0-85070-788-9, external links, RT Honorable Sir Malcolm Rifkin and MP Official Website, Sir Malcolm Rifkin and Conservative Party Profile, Kensington, Chelsea and Fulham Conservatives, Profile at Parliament of the United Kingdom, Contributions in Parliament at Hansard 1803 Euro 2005, Current Session Contributions in Parliament at Hansard, Electoral History and Profile at The Guardian, Voting Record at Public Whip, Record in Parliament at They Work For You, Profile at Westminster Parliamentary Record, Profile at BBC News Democracy Live, Articles Authored at Journalisted, Article Archive at The Guardian, News Articles, BBC News A Euro Rifkind and Frame for Leadership June 7, 2005, BBC News A Euro Profile, Sir Malcolm Rifkind May 10, 2005, the Observer Euro Manifesto for a Conservative Britain column by Malcolm Rifkind, May 8, 2005.